iceberg is a perfect projection of my life. There is what meets the eye and there what lies beneath the cold, dark surface, full of pain and regrets, living with the shameful past that plagues my mind. In chains bound by fear, each day living in a prison cell, devoured by addictions of my sins, echoes from hell call for me that I don't belong anywhere. Thoughts of suicide torture me every day. I am lost and isolated. I don't have to live this way. I make my hands ready for battle. This time, I won't fight alone. This time, I will break free. Once and for all. Everyone, we welcome you here in our studio at Flame of Fire Ministry together with Pastor Vlad Savchuk from Hungry Generation. And I believe we will have a good time for the next 30 minutes. Break Free, the new book just came out uh, after uh, Pastor Vlad and he's going to share more about this book in this program. So stay tuned and open your heart. Thank you for coming, Thank Pastor you. Vlad. Thank you. Tell us more about the idea of this book. Well, the idea of the book is a lot of people, they see our ministry as a place where deliverance happens. We also have uh, sometimes even people see uh, us as a controversial church because of uh, we do deliverance or uh, we bring people who practice deliverance and practice it on a large scale. But uh, the book was born a long time ago when I was introduced to pornography. Wow. First, at a young age. This is where I believe that everything started. Um, when I was in the Ukraine, I was about 12 years of age. The uh, first time I was exposed to pornographic material. And then we moved to the you United know, thank States. Thank you for sharing this because many people, they really need to hear this. They're struggling with pornography everywhere. And everybody yes. is silent, you know. Like nobody's talking about this yeah. issue. Yeah. I mean, the scene, the spirit mm -hmm. of pornography. Yeah, and that's what I opened the introduction chapter with my story. Wow. When we came to the United States, I was 13 and a half. And so within six months of us being in America, a neighbor of ours asked us to uh, take care of his house. And it was an American guy for seven days. And so I, uh, me and my cousin were taking care of the house. And of course, we're Ukrainians, so we're very curious how Americans live. So we went through his whole house. We checked the refrigerator. <laughs> we checked his bedroom. We checked everything. Wow. And uh, I opened the one closet, and it had a stack of VHS tapes. There's about 250 VHS, the whole closet You're full kidding. of tapes. And it was pornography. I wish I would say that I closed the closet and, and ran from there. At 13 and a half, I, uh, I remember the thought going to my mind. I'm just going to play a tape just to see if it's not a Billy Graham crusade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, I mean, I'm like, how stupid that could be. But that's the thought that I had in my mind, just to check. What if it's like a Catherine Kuhlman crusade got stuck in some kind of a bad cover? Wow. And so um, one thing led to another. Two tapes later... I felt, I, I still remember the feeling of disgust and, and feeling sick, feeling like I got violated or something. Wow. And little did I know is that um, uh, something entered me uh, mm. at that time. You felt? I felt, I felt uh, that something entered me and felt it in my body. Um, I made a decision that uh, that's it. I'm repenting. This will never happen again. The next day, it happened again. The day after that, it happened again. I was so happy when the neighbor actually came back and took the keys away because at the time there was no computers, there was no internet. Uh, so I was fine for six months after wow. that. And then started a battle that lasted for a few years uh, from about 14 till about 17, 16 and 17. I was already doing youth ministry. Wow. I was already preaching on Sundays. No matter how hard I tried, once a month, and typically before like a big service, Thursday or Friday, like, like a clock, I would fall into wow, pornography. Wow. I always ran to my pastor right away. Wow. And so I got on my knees. I said, Pastor, I can't preach. I can't minister. And my pastor, he's a man of faith and grace. And he prayed. He would pray for me. And he says, no, you're going to preach. He says, this is the only way you're going to overcome. Wow. Um, and so he never stopped me from ministry. He says, he says, you're battling. Fasted once a week. Fasted three days a month uh, against it. And I put restrictions on anything. And no matter how hard I tried, I could not overcome. A book by Jack Hayford. Uh, I picked up a book. I started reading books on freedom. Anything I could put my hands on. A book by Jack Hayford. Um, something about 
sexual purity, he mentions a story where a deacon in his ministry, who was a deacon for 30 or 40 years for a long time, he had a really terrible past. He started to have sexual thoughts coming again and sexual temptations. He comes to Jack Hayford and says that, I'm being tempted, could you pray for me? And Jack Hayford being his pastor and being his uh, staff, having him on the staff, he begins to pray for him and God shows him a vision. But in the vision, he sees five holes in that guy's soul. And he says, these five holes are five sexual encounters you've had before you got saved. And he says, though you're saved, he says, these are the holes that Satan is using years later to attack your soul. Wow. And as I was reading that story, a scale was removed out of my eyes. And the Holy Spirit showed me, he says, you had a front door and a back door of your life. The front door is when you were 12, the first exposure to pornography, and the back door is when you were 13 and a half. Wow. And so I went on a seven day fasting. Uh, it was one of the easiest fasts I've ever done because when you're desperate yeah. and fed up, yeah. it's easy to fast. Yeah. And, and the only thing I did during the fast, and I said, God, I know I repented for this. I know I prayed for it, but I never saw the connection. Mm. And I pray that you deliver me. Wow. I can't say that I felt something different, but I knew that I was freed. Mm. A sense of knowing that I never had before. Mm. And ever since that point, I still was tempted in exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. The only thing is in the moment of temptation, I almost felt like this one small degree of strength, I had it before. Almost like I had the power to, whether it was a computer, whether it was a magazine, whether it was something else, to walk away and to, wow. uh, to leave that. Mm. So that was my journey to, to freedom. Little did I know that, little, little did I knew that later on, when deliverances started to happen in our youth group, when people start getting saved about seven, eight years ago, first in our church, and um, people start uh, manifesting uh, randomly. Mm -hmm. This wasn't during prayer. This was started first happening during worship. Wow. Where during worship, people would fall. So I thought it was like, you know, like anointing, maybe Benny Hinn's anointing. Mm -hmm. I've been watching Benny Hinn before. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking maybe that anointing is being released before I get up, that kind of a thing, until they wouldn't get up. So we would just kind of pray for more. Wow. And, uh, and then when they started to manifest, we're like, well, I guess not more, <laughs> out. <laughs> and so, and one case after another, uh, we, we started to deal with people who started to come to that. And so I started to study a little bit more about that topic. And, um, and then we got introduced to some other ministries, like Tipe Joshua, Jen Shi, who um, brought a little bit more light uh, into that. But if it wouldn't be for the deliverance, I really believe, or freedom, if the word deliverance, you know, scares people, uh, the word freedom, um, I don't think I would be in the ministry today. Wow. Um, and then I experienced that with my wife uh, from the spirit of loneliness and, uh, and nightmares when we got married and stuff. So to me, this is not a topic I studied. This is something I lived, That's I experienced, yeah. and, and it's something that we practice as a church, and I believe it belongs to Christians. Wow. I believe many churches need to hear this because they pretend like everything is all right, and mm -hmm. many young people, they experience the deliverance but they never walk in freedom mm. they don't know how to live in freedom and uh and i'm glad that you guys practicing you know and doing ministry and deliverance mm -hmm. and conferences and teaching you write a book about this so tell us more about this book so what what you pointed out is so true. Every single church, whether they believe in deliverance or don't believe in deliverance, they will come to the point. Of course, many churches, they don't believe uh -huh. in deliverance. Mm -hmm. They never practice in deliverance. Yeah. So that's the issue. I believe deliverance, one of the biggest thing that we need today. Because Jesus says, he says that a son dwells in a house. As whoever is a slave cannot stay in the house. And anytime people can go through a growth track, people can go through membership classes, people can, people can become home group leaders. But um, you can educate a slave. You can um, dress up a slave. You can clothe a slave. But there's one thing about slave, somebody who's in bondage to a particular sin or generational curse, is there's no consistency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think this is a challenge that we're facing right now. Um, you know, last week we were at the one uh, conference, uh, second largest church in America, very good with system and everything. And they started to do freedom courses, actually from Jack Hayford, mm -hmm. his, his courses, with a, like a freedom weekend, Friday and Saturday, because they start noticing people are serving and they're falling out. And they're wow. like, while we have a great system, something, there's a missing link. And the missing link is that people need to receive freedom. For and like sure. you said, it's not about receiving the deliverance, but also 
learning to walk with it. And, and some people need actually like a rehab center or they need something like a destiny center, a place where they need to isolate themselves or internship. And some people can manage their freedom by just going to a home group, like having somebody walk with them. Some people need to seek inner healing to receive that. I remember one of the stories I didn't mention in the book because I don't believe that this story is finished yet. Um, it's one of our losses. A young man, um, he was 16 years of age, um, Hispanic, got saved. Two months later comes during worship, we're worshiping, and he stands like a pencil. <laughs> he wow. just falls. And so, and we had maybe 35 kids at the time, so very small uh, church. And he fell, we praying for him afterwards, and honestly, I didn't know whether this was Jesus or the Holy, or the devil's manifesting. So we're praying, he started manifesting. Turns out that the evil spirit entered him. He had a nurse, he had a babysitter when he was a little kid who was a witch and who tried to burn him alive. The crazy part is nobody knows that except his mom and dad. Wow. There are scars on his legs. They walked in to the babysitter trying to kill him. And so they fired the babysitter. They cleaned that. They never told him that story. So the demon actually is the one, and we asked, you know, how did you enter him? The demon, came, uh, the demon spoke is that I entered through, he was dedicated to me through an, uh, the babysitter and everything. And so we, because we record all the deliverances, we brought the parents who were Catholics, and we showed them that, and we said, hey, could you tell us a little bit about his beginning and everything? They were blown away. They're like, we don't understand what was happening to our son, but this is true. He was, he had this incident. And so, but the real reason why the devil stayed in him was because of his addiction to Paris Hilton pornography. Wow. He was obsessed with a particular Paris Hilton pornography. He wore Paris Hilton clothes. He used Paris Hilton perfume, everything. Wow. So he repented. He renounced everything. I had to be the one to uh, drive him home. He lived about 25 minutes from Tri-Cities. Uh, at the time, I was very young and had a small Toyota uh, Corolla. Uh, no phone reception at the area where he lived. And as we're driving, um, he starts to manifest in the car. He's twice my size. Um, he grabs a pen and, and tries to stab his veins in the car. And so <laughs> it was almost like a horror film. It's dark, there's no lights in the streets. <laughs> I open my flip phone and there is no reception. Wow. And I'm thinking, how am I, in the back of my mind, I'm already going ahead. I'm like, if he stabs himself, how will I explain that to his parents that I didn't do it? <laughs> I'm like, I'm scared to death and nobody's there. So I'm like one hand on the wheel and like driving this gothic town and putting my hand on his on his hand and I was like the name of Jesus Satan let go of him and everything because he wasn't fully delivered he goes back home I tell him I was like listen I'm gonna wait for you in the car but you need to throw all of this stuff away and then we can go back and uh, he goes home he throws the stuff away the next day he downloads the pornography again and we wow. do deliverance again wow we did it for a month and a half every other day fasted he was also going to school so I had to Sometimes pick him up from school because he would manifest like during lunchtime. And so they would, so I would pick him up, put him in. And until this day, uh, this man never got delivered. Wow. I still believe one day there's going to be a final deliverance because I see him in town once in a while. And the moment he sees me, he, you know, he runs away. And I know that God still has a plan for him. That's why I never mention his story. But I really believe that when people receive that and there is no continuous walk of freedom, because the challenge that happens with people is they receive freedom from pornography. For example, kingdom domain, or they go to some kind of a minister, somebody prays for them. And the deception that comes in is that people feel invincible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People feel like they no longer need discipline. They no longer need to fast. Mm -hmm. they, know, they almost feel like above temptation. And that is pride. They need to have discipleship. And discipline. And discipline, yeah. You know, the more I travel in and do ministry, and ministering to people, the more I'm shocked. To be honest, everyone who's watching me right now, watching us, I think 95% people, Christian people, they struggling with pornography. A lot of men. It's crazy. It's crazy. Not, not only boys, but girls too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Boys and girls, this giant, this spirit of pornography, killing people, eat the presence of God in their life and lives, you know, out of them. So, wow, I'm, I'm so glad you released this book. And uh, everyone who's watching us, you need to get the copy of this book. You need to get the copy of this. Also churches, youth ministries, mm -hmm. because you, you, you have the whole... Uh, 
study guide. The, the study so at the end of the book, uh, I have a study guide for whether people want to go through the book as a, a small group or um, on the website, uh, hungrygen.com slash book, we have videos that are about eight minutes long. And then with the video, it has a testimony of somebody's deliverance. So we have testimonies, and I've included some of them there in the books, and I wanted people to see those that they read in the book. We have testimonies of people who had sleep apnea after deliverance that they were healed. Um, a person who had um, 15 psychotic medicines. Actually, the doctor, her doctor said she was on the highest dose of psychotic medicine he's ever seen anybody in America. And so after deliverance, um, completely free, she's actually part of our internship right now. Wow. And so a bipolar, schizophrenia, all gone after deliverance. And so I've seen a person who had a leukemia, two years, two and a half years of leukemia, medically documented now. We have about four, three to four medical reports six months later after he received deliverance that he was healed. And so what we do is we have a study guide and we have this 10 minute videos where we kind of share about the open doors to the devil, how to maintain your freedom, how to receive forgiveness, uh, the renewing of the mind, which is a huge thing, how to live a disciplined life, how to submit yourself to mentors. And then we do this nine minute clips with a uh, three to four minute testimony that wow. deals with like deliverance and healing because we don't want to show deliverance as it's only from sin. Sometimes people experience deliverance they experience healing or financial mm -hmm, breakthrough mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in their life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we provide study guides uh, there as well and all of that is available for free uh, so that people can do it. Actually, uh, this week is when we start our eight week uh, with our home groups. All of our home groups are going through that because I want our home groups. So everything to, in this book? Everything's in this book and the rest of the stuff is on the website where people can download videos. You guys need to get this. I'm serious, it's gonna help you. My daughter is reading this oh, book. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, Jesus. So she's reading this, and I'm after her when she's done. You have to understand is that I, um, uh, I'm a simple guy. I have a high school diploma, uh, which means uh, I'm not super educated. And the benefit, and a lot of people that wrote the You're book. You're much more educated than me. I don't have high school diploma. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then your book is gonna be better. <laughs> A lot of people that wrote to me after reading it, they, they, were, they really get blessed with the simplicity and they use a lot of examples. I use a lot of examples. It's not a lot of theory. Yes, there's a lot of insight and revelation from the Word of God. But I wanted to be intervened with, first of all, practical things, how sure, it works. Sure. And I use a lot of life outside of church and outside of testimony examples, like physical examples when it deals with the lawn or deals with the car, with things to illustrate spiritual examples, uh, spiritual truth so that people can relate and people can understand. Wow. And also you guys will have a, a conference coming up, right? Next year, mm -hmm. Race to Deliver. Yes. So w when is going to happen? So that's going to happen April uh, 5 through 7. Um, it's going to be uh, focused mainly on healing and deliverance. Mm -hmm. Those conferences are not for everyone. So um, usually we tell people it's for everyone. Yeah, uh, manage that and invite people. So yeah. Race to Deliver conference is for people who need deliverance or people who feel like God wants to raise them to bring deliverance to other people. This coming conference in 2019 is going to be very different. Instead of doing three deliverance services, it's going to be only two deliverance services and the other two services are gonna be focused on empowering people Good. to bring salvation, healing and deliverance to their community, their home group, their church or other people. So uh, we're really, really excited even our, the way our ministry is going because in our church, um, all this, most of the small group leaders minister in deliverance. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had last Friday training. We kind of teach them. We don't train them too much. We want them to get trained most of it by the power of the Holy Spirit and practice. Mm -hmm. We give them the basics and in their home groups, they pray for deliverance. They pray for breaking of the curses. And so I'm really excited for that because I believe it's not just the one guy who just stands with a microphone sure. and screams out, out. Um, yeah. But it's, it's the body of Christ ministering freedom and people can experience freedom also on their own without somebody praying for them. Mm. What I like about this book that it's not only the information and uh, you know uh, good stories but also you have practical thing that they can do it like a mm -hmm. homework mm -hmm. so and each chapter ends with a prayer each, each chapter. chapter there's a specific prayer so if somebody doesn't know for example how to pray for breaking of the curses wonderful so I lead them through each chapter uh, based on what the chapter was, uh, they can receive prayer. The book is also available in audio form. 
Yeah, um, please tell us more how to mm -hmm. get this book. So on, uh, on Audible or iTunes Audio um, or anywhere where you can find audiobook is there. And I was the one that read it. Um, and we have quite a few of uh, after script moments where I go off mm -hmm. <laughs> into the <laughs> after script. And so, and there are prayers that are offered there also on the book. And quite a few people that already went through it were really, really blessed. Even people on our team, because I wanted to hear their feedback. And, um, and it's available on iBooks, Barnes and Nobles. Um, and honestly, anywhere books are sold, it's there. Good. Thank you so much, Pastor Vlad, and everyone who's watching us. Get this book, and I believe God will bless you tremendous through this book and deliver you if you need deliverance wow where the spirit of the lord there, there is, is liberty Amen. there is liberty god bless you everyone get the book read it help young people and i believe god will use this uh, material to help many many people all over the world thank you so much pastor Vlad. Thank good you, to Andrew. have you with us bye-bye thank you an iceberg is a perfect projection of my life there is what meets the eye, and there what lies beneath the cold, dark surface, full of pain and regrets, living with the shameful past that plagues my mind, in chains bound by fear, each day living in a prison cell, devoured by addictions of my sins. Echoes from hell call for me that I don't belong anywhere. Thoughts of suicide torture me every day. I am lost and isolated. I don't have to live this way. I make my hands ready for battle. This time, I won't fight alone. This time, I will break free. Once and for all.